So, you have a tray bot, but you're not quite sure how to do this. You're having trouble getting the cube to stay in the tray when the arms raised to score in the towers. Well, today I'm going to show you how with this guide. The first thing that you're going to need to do is build a system like this. What we have here is a is a mechanism that looks is similar to a four bar mechanism, but a bunch of the arms and bars are not in the general in the general four bar shape. But you can see we still we still have one, two, three, and four. Yeah. So what this does is when this lever is pushed on, it moves this lever more that way which moves this piece more that way, which pulls this down. It basically just a way of extending where the arms have the power to push something down, so the arms don't have to go under the tray to push down this little arm piece right here. All right. So it's, it's very simple, just like that. And down at the bottom, see here it has some rubber bands that will, that will that will pull it back up after it's released once pushed down. It's completely passive. It's pushed down by the arms. <coughs> it does not require any extra motors. It's just a, it's just a completely passive system. Yeah. I made mine out of high strength shafts, which I which I bent this one at a 90 degree angle and I used a mill to make some holes in it. That's a fairly complicated method. There's a much easier way. Um, you can use stuff like, um, like, let me find it. Um, you can use stuff like standoffs that have shaft collars on the ends as the bars and stuff. Um, you can use one by angle. You with with a uh, with one of these with one of these 90, 90 degree gussets. You can do many many things. Here, this piece that sticks up, up like this here, that is just an extension of this arm that better matches the geometry of the arms on my robot. Um, you can make any sort of extra little angle thing here that you want to better match the geometry in your robot. Yeah. It's overall a fairly a fairly simple system. There's many many ways it can be done, but this is what works best for mine. You can do it for yours however you feel like it. Next, you are going to need to build something like this. This is a piece of 1x1 one one angle mounted on a 45 degree gusset. This 45 degrees does not need to exactly match the angle of your tray, it just needs to be generally close. This is to mount our little 4 bar piece that we built in the last step onto your chassis. You can see we have one on both sides of the robot. Thirdly, you're going to need to make a hole in your Lexan or metal or whatever is back in your tray so that your lock can poke up from the tray. Lastly, you're going to need to mount the four bar piece onto the robot. For me, what I'm doing is I'm taking a long screw with one inch worth of the three eighths inch thick nylon spacers. And I'm simply putting these right on here. Same on the other side.
I lost the caption out. Let's see where it is. There it is. When you mount this, I would recommend using something like Nylox because that will hold it in much better. Because I'm just doing this quickly to show you guys how to do it. I'm using catch nuts. Sorry about that. Okay. And it's on. Let's move the tray back. And take a look. There we go. We have this on here. You're going to probably need to add some sort of system on your arms like this to extend them to reach our little piece right here. But but other than that, this is about all you need to do to build the cube block. As you can see, when the arms go down, that gets pushed down. And the cubes can slide. The cubes can slide right over here and stop right there. Like that. When using your cube block, you're going to need to make sure to make a macro to be able to effectively raise your arms and activate the lock at the same time. It's similar to this. If you don't do that, and you simply try to outtake the cubes so that they reach the intakes, then raise the arms, if something like this will happen. And they'll all fall out of the tray. The reason for this is when the arms go up, they push this cube here up and make it try to flip over, which isn't ideal. If you go slowly enough, it'll fall right back down and land on the lock, but that is still not ideal. If you have it going at full speed, it, as I showed earlier, it will just do this. And all your cubes will go tumbling out. So, the way to get around this is to do something where... The way to get around this is to do something where you outtake the cubes just enough to, to where they will raise when the arms raise. You need to raise the arms just a little bit to where the lock pokes up from the tray just a little bit to where this cube won't slide out immediately if the arms raise a little bit more. You need to move this cube out a little further until it's out of range of this cube when the arms raise. Then from there you can raise the arms. What I did with this macro here is I made it much more smooth so when I hit the button it will outtake and raise the arm slowly, which does the same thing, just it looks a little more smooth. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them for me in the comment section below. I hope you found this tutorial helpful.